Bye. Discomfort back there. Instead of using aloe or baby wipes or powders, try the cooling, soothing relief of Preparation H because your dairy air deserves expert care. Try new soothing relief. You know, before I flew here to Minneapolis for the George Floyd Memorial, I had a chance to speak with Bernice King, the daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King, who could not be here because she couldn't take the risk of contracting COVID-19. Happening now. Interruptions, chants, and above all, impassioned pleas for change. Black Lives Matter supporters coming to city council today, asking them to defund the police. The sixth consecutive day of protest continues here in the Alamo City, and already groups have gathered here outside police headquarters. That story coming up. Plus, Governor Abbott and other top Republican leaders are asking the head of Bear County's Republican Party to step down after her controversial remarks regarding the death of George Floyd. And it looks like our first triple digit day of the year is right around the corner. I'll be back to talk about that and the activity in the Gulf coming right up. Millions of people have lost their jobs and their health insurance. Coming up, ways to get prescription medications at deep discounts or even free. And millions of federal dollars coming to San Antonio to help those struggling with the pandemic. The city's vote on that plan. The News at 5 starts right now. We want to bring you some breaking news. This is happening on the far north side. Yeah, San Antonio police and the fire department at a hazmat situation in the 100 block of Red Willow. That's in the Stone Oak neighborhood. They're actually evacuating a neighborhood there. Tiffany Huertas is there now live. Tiffany, what can you tell us about the situation? Ursula, Steve, several law enforcement agencies arrived here a few hours ago. We've seen police, we've seen the fire department and the FBI, but take a look right here. We're at the corner of Estancia Circle and Heights Boulevard. They are blocking vehicles from going down Heights Boulevard. SAPD says they were evacuating the area in the 100 block of Red Willow for possible explosive materials. Police say they are still gathering information, but could take a while due to hazardous material. At this time, it's not clear what happened. SAPD will be providing information soon, and we will have all that information on KSAT.com. Back to you. Emotions running high in city council chambers today. As council members discussed mid year budget adjustments, Black Lives Matter supporters urged council members to quote defund the police. That quote. is the rallying cry for some in this movement. Garrett Berger tells us those at the meeting made sure they were heard. The chants of frustrated and passionate protest rang out in chambers today preceded by calls for change. I am demanding that you defund the San Antonio police and cancel the union contract and immediately pivot to creating communities of care. Some invoking the names of men killed by San Antonio police officers. Marquise Jones, Charles Roundtree, Anthony Scott. The comments came after days of local protests over the death of George Floyd in Minnesota that have occasionally resulted in violence on both sides. And I want to know why SAPD felt the need to use wooden bullets and injured citizens who are very angry, and rightfully so. As council members spoke, frustration continued to bubble, resulting in frequent shouts and jeers. Well, I haven't spoken yet. Give me a chance. Until finally, it boiled over. We're trying to be heard. You guys want to hear us? You know what? We never in a million years expected to fight terrorism in our own no one was removed, though the mayor raised the possibility of recessing the meeting. This, this kind of interaction is not going to solve anything. we got to talk. One man eventually presented a petition with 10 requests, and Nuremberg told him to meet with him after. The next talk in a difficult discussion. City council members eventually approved the expected adjustments to this year's budget. Though that includes less spending for police, that's primarily because of savings and grants. However, the budget process for next year is due to begin soon, and the police union contract is set to expire next fall. At City Council, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Garrett. The sixth consecutive day of protests continuing here in the Alamo City. Yeah, crowds have begun to march from SAPD headquarters to the courthouse as they continue their fight against racial inequality. Stephen Cavazos is live there now. Stephen, do you have any idea what we might expect today? Steve, Ursula, we are out here at the Bear County Courthouse and just take a look right behind me. We are seeing a somewhat smaller crowd than what we saw yesterday, but nonetheless, the objective today is for the protest to be peaceful and to make sure that there aren't any agitators that will hinder their mission. No justice! No peace! Now, groups started arriving at Public Safety Headquarters earlier this afternoon and began marching toward the Bear County Courthouse. Now, this is the sixth day of protests in San Antonio. Many out here say they will continue to push for change and an end to police brutality, not just locally, but across the country. But again, they are saying they want to do this peacefully. One person we spoke to says they will not stand for any violence. Because the whole point is violence isn't the answer, and we want to preach that as well. We just want to be listened to and understood. Now, we can't expect to see more peaceful demonstrations and a demand for more answers. Now, some of these people say that they are happy with today's city council meeting. However, we have spotted San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg out here. Right now, he's just been observing the protesters. We'll try to get more information from him throughout the day. But we'll be live out here coming up at 6. For now, reporting live outside the Bear County Courthouse, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Steve, Ursula. Thank you, Stephen. New at 5, Governor Greg Abbott and Senator John Cornyn calling on Bear County GOP Chair Cynthia Bream's resignation. This after she referred to George Floyd's death as a staged event on Facebook. In that post that she calls the death quote, a film public, a filmed public execution of a black man by a white cop with the purpose of creating racial tension and driving a wedge in the growing group of anti deep state sentiment from common people that have been already been psychologically traumatized by COVID-19 fears and quote Bream's post has since been deleted. Governor Abbott's office called Bream's comments disgusting, saying they have no place in the Republican Party or in public discourse. Senator John Cornyn's campaign and other Republican leaders are saying they share the same concern with the comments. We have reached out to Bream for a comment, but we have not yet received one. George Floyd's death prompted a global movement. Now his family, friends and those inspired by him remember his life. Daryl Forges in Minneapolis at the site of Floyd's memorial. Through song and prayer, the memory of George Floyd is honored. Can y'all please say his name? While friends and family celebrate his life. I love my brother, man. We had so many memories, you know, together. His death inspired demonstrators across the globe to demand for racial equality. And in police brutality. All four Minneapolis police officers involved with his arrest, now in custody, charged in connection with his killing. George Floyd changed American policing forever. And by that, the message has now grown to a nation begging for unity and healing. The hope of lasting change is on the minds of many. Seeking justice, seeking justice, seeking justice for the family of George Floyd. As Floyd's family prepares to say a final farewell to the man they loved. Everybody wants justice. We want justice for George. He's going to get it. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, I'm Daryl Forges. Taking a closer look at former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin's past, we have now learned throughout his career the 44-year-old was named in about 17 different misconduct complaints, one of them surrounding an incident where Chauvin searched a woman and put her in a squad car because she had been driving 10 miles over the speed limit. The files were shared in the city of Minneapolis's website. Many of those files were redacted. Three more stories you need to know about today. Big news out of the San Antonio Police Department. Longtime union president Mike Helley will step down at the end of his current term. Helley has been president of the association since 2008. He said he made that decision 
months ago. His current term ends next February. Now, he said he would also retire from the department with the rank of detective at that time. Sapoa and city officials are scheduled to begin negotiations on their next collective bargaining agreement in January. A 43-year-old man has been charged with murder after police found a 39-year-old woman's body inside a north side apartment. Right now, we are working to learn her name. What we do know is that she was found around 1030 last night inside Thomas Roberts' apartment. Police were called there by someone who was seeking emergency medical services. Police say when they arrived, Roberts would not let them in and insisted on EMS assistance. Police finally went inside and they found the woman on the floor. The San Antonio police are also looking for a driver who hit a woman who was crossing a street last night. They say that woman was actually crossing near the intersection of North Zarzamora and East Commerce about 10 o'clock last night. That's when a driver in a blue Dodge Avenger hit her. That driver didn't stay at the scene. The woman taken to the hospital in stable condition. City Council passing a $191 million recovery and resiliency plan to help residents who are struggling from the COVID-19 pandemic. The plans will use a mix of federal and city dollars for programs like job training, rent assistance, small business grants, and internet access for students. Mayor Ron Nuremberg has framed the plan as an opportunity to move the city past where it was before the pandemic. Councilman Courage talks about our annual budget as a moral document. Well, now this is where we put our money where our mouth is, uh, which is why we've got to double down on the people in this community, the small businesses in this community, the services that are essential for the post-COVID economy right now. The plan passed despite numerous people urging council members to delay the vote. Several organizations like the Texas Organizing Project said there had not been enough opportunity for community input. As millions of people resume activities and take part in protests across the country, concerns of another COVID-19 spike are growing. Texas, California and Arizona, just three of more than a dozen states reporting an increase in cases. And with more businesses and leisure activities opening in places like Las Vegas and New York City, leaders have a word of caution for both protesters and citizens alike. If you were at a protest, go get a test, please. The protesters have a civic duty here also. Be responsible. As the economy works to recover and reopen, we are still seeing the number of U.S. unemployment claims grow. Last week, 1.9 million new claims brought the national total to more than 42 million. We had a story just a few minutes ago with Cynthia Bring talking about uh, comments that she had made. Well, now we do have a response for her, and you can look for that at 6. Meanwhile, Mayor Ron Nuremberg is down at the Bear County Courthouse speaking right now to some of the protesters that are out there. Let's listen in. Make something beautiful together. What we want. That's what we want. We want an end to the systemic prejudice that lines our systems from top to bottom. And we're not just talking about the criminal justice system. We had a good conversation this morning about that building that we now call the City Council Chambers, where there was a protest back in 1975 where many of our community came together and all they were asking for was some flood control projects. Because redlining policies 50, 60 years ago that were set up in a systemic, racist way prevented equal funds to go into communities that needed to simply not be washed out every time it rains. These are more fundamental issues that you guys are fighting for, and I want to say thank you for having the courage to do it. But I want to reiterate my commitment. I basically hired Pharaoh today, but I told him we're going to be meeting every single day, every single week, until you guys go home feeling like you've finally been heard and that change is here in San Antonio. We need action! I know you need action. We want it. I know you need action, and that's why I'm asking you to hold me accountable. And not, if I might say, not everybody out there. You know, there's people just watching this. They, they just want to go home and, and close their eyes and, and feel safe yeah. and, and, and pretend that somebody else is going to solve the problems. When we put on 
when we put a when we ask you for your vote or we ask you for your support or we ask you for anything else it's because we're asking for that responsibility to make the change and we're asking that responsibility not to be put on somebody else but to be put on us so hold me accountable okay yeah. nobody else Sir. people will make mistakes we all make mistakes there are going to be people out there who will, who will be with you who will make mistakes. There are going to be people on my side who maybe who will wear a uniform that might make mistakes, but let's forgive that and hold me accountable for it. Because I'm the mayor of this goddamn city, and we're going to make change together, okay? God bless you. Thank you. To an impassioned speech for Mayor Ron Nuremberg there on the steps of the Bear County Courthouse to some of the protesters who have formed, basically saying, hold him accountable. Right. Saying that when you go home, when you finally go home, you will go home feeling like you were heard and that changes have been made. Yep. That playing out live on the Bear County Courthouse. We'll be right back. We want to bring you an update to our lead story tonight. Residents in the 100 block of Red Willow being urged to evacuate, but now we're being told that most of Stone Oak has received a message from SA Fire Department telling them they do need to leave their homes now. Yeah, they're saying this is due to a chemical release. Our Tiffany Huertas was just there a moment ago talking about the fact there is an active investigation in the area and they are looking at a particular home. They are not allowing people into the neighborhood, but this is something a little bit different. She did not report on a chemical release in the area. The fire department issued an emergency alert Thursday afternoon, actually just moments ago, to residents in the area asking them to evacuate immediately to Lopez Middle School. That's located at 23103 Hardy Oak Boulevard. San Antonio Police, the FBI, the San Antonio Fire Department, the hazmat teams are on the scene of what they're calling a chemical hazard. Now, we are reporting it's just the 100 block of Red Willow, but we know there are people throughout the Stone Oak area that are getting this particular notification, and some of them are confused because Lopez Middle School is actually closer to the site of this investigation than their homes are. Right, so there's a bit of confusion. We are going to try to sort it all out for you, but what you do need to know that is if you have received this message, it's regarding a chemical release that's in the 100 block of Red Willow. If this has been expanded to include more of Stone Oak, which is why you may have received this notification of evacuation suggested by the San Antonio Fire Department, uh, we are not able to tell you why yeah, we, we and, don't have that information at the moment. But if you are near this area, it is a good idea to evacuate because that's the alert that's going out. And this is some of the video that we're seeing right now of the SWAT teams that are in this particular neighborhood. Again, they are asking the 100 block of Red Willow people being urged to evacuate due to a quote chemical release. That's from the San Antonio Fire Department. And the place they're asking you to go is to Lopez Middle School. We will be right on top of this. We have a reporter at the scene. In the meantime, we're going to head over to weather where we are expecting some serious heat. Yeah, we are. It looks like our first 100 degree day is on the way just around the corner. So let's get right to it. First, taking a look at our satellite and radar. You know, we had some activity on the radar screen over the past couple of days at this hour. Currently, we really don't have anything to speak of other than a little shower southeast of town right along the coastal plain. And that's where we've seen the sea breeze kick up some of these little showers. But that's it. We're really turning our rain chances off. The tap is getting turned off. We had a good stretch of rainy weather. Not anymore. We're watching some storms off to the north of us. Already some severe weather. Upper level flow would steer them our way, but we don't anticipate them getting anywhere near our area later on tonight. So just a quiet evening. Now tropical depression, Cristobal. Max winds at 35 miles per hour. That's it. This is a weak system right now because it's over land, but it is likely to re-strengthen as we get into the upcoming weekend, moving into the central Gulf and then likely hitting somewhere along the Louisiana coastline, maybe even far east Texas by Sunday into Monday as a tropical storm. This is really looking like a big widespread rain event. Guidance is still indicating that the nearest showers to us would be about the Houston area, and that would be as we get into Sunday and even lingering into Monday. It may throw some extra clouds clouds our way, but we're not expecting anything in terms of moisture or winds, and this is not looking like a big wind event. 
So right now we're at 90 degrees. Feels like 95 when you factor in the humidity. Some 80s in the hill country, but most of us right around that 90 degree mark and even in the 90s. Catula's 95, Del Rio at 99. This evening, quiet. Temperatures falling down through the 80s, humid. Light southeasterly breeze. Tomorrow we'll start the day with clouds at 75, then making it up to 93. Here comes that heat. Sunday 97, Monday 100. Tuesday, we could make it to 104, which would tie the record for that day. Wow. That's incredible. All right, we now know exactly when the San Antonio Spurs will be back in action, Greg. And for that matter, the rest of the NBA, we actually had the schedule of events as well, including when next season would start. When we come back, the NBA approves the restart of their league and SAFC back in business as well. Coming up. The NBA Board of Governors has officially approved the restart of the league that was shut down due to the coronavirus in March, but the Spurs' postseason streak is still in jeopardy under the NBA's 22-team plan to return to play on July 31st at Disney World in Orlando. That's because the plan includes eight regular season games of the play-in tournament to decide the playoff seedings. The NBA Board of Governors met today in a conference call, approved the return to play involving only 22 of their 30 teams and a 29-to-1 vote. According to ESPN, with only the Portland Trailblazers voting against it, 13 from the Western Conference, including the Spurs, and 9 from the Eastern Conference. It includes teams that right now are at least six games out of the final playoff position. The Spurs currently stand four games out of the Memphis Grizzlies, who hold the eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. And will need to find a way to win to move up to find out a way into that postseason, the wide world of sports complex at Disney's World. Now, while we wait... For the NBA Players Association approval, this is what the schedule now looks like. They will start training camp on July 9th through the 11th. The 19-20 season will continue July 31st, October the 12th. The draft lottery will begin August the 25th. The NBA draft October 15th, free agency October 18th. And then next season, the training camps will begin November the 10th. And the start of the 2021 season will be on December 1st. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL telling all 32 teams that coaches can start returning to team training facilities starting tomorrow. In a memo sent to the teams, the NFL says the coaches can now count toward the staff that is allowed into the buildings that is currently capped at 100. And in addition, according to NFL.com, the coaches will be tested for the coronavirus. That means both the Cowboys' Mike McCarthy and the Texans' Bill O'Brien can finally return to their team's headquarters for the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic shut down facilities in March. Saints quarterback Drew Brees has issued an apology for his original comments to Yahoo Finance about he would never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag, saying on Instagram today he completely missed the mark. His comments drew criticism from his own teammate, Malcolm Jenkins, to Lakers star LeBron James. And today, Bree said, I made comments that were insensitive and completely missed the mark on issues we are facing right now in our country. They lacked awareness and any type of compassion or empathy. Instead, those words have become divisive and hurtful and misled people into believing that somehow I am an enemy. We'll be back with more after this. All right, we have some new information on the evacuation order that has gone out in the Stone Oak area. There is concern about chemicals inside the house that they are looking at in that neighborhood. And the evacuation order was real, but it went to a much larger area than was originally intended. The residents that are located in the 100 block of Red Willow, they are being urged to evacuate to Lopez Middle School. That is at 23103 Hardy Oak Boulevard. But again, if you received a notification that you need to evacuate, you may have received it in error in a larger area outside of the evacuation area. Details as needed, and we'll see you back here at 6.